Uh, obviously, uh, you've been kind of targeting this fight with Drikas for a while, uh, even when you were a champion. So I guess now that you're only a few days away from actually getting to fight him, I guess, how was camp? What are the emotions this fight week? And yeah. Camp was awesome. It was refreshing. It was one of the best ones, if not the best one yet. And the emotions this fight week, it's calm. Well, uh, what in fight camp specifically, if you could say, um, made this one of the best ones? Uh, just we reshuffled the deck. We changed the way we, um, we just pretty much kept what was useful and discarded what was useless for us. And we upgraded the, uh, the program itself and had a preseason, had training blocks, not just going hard, 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 hard all the time. And then, yeah, getting injured and stuff. Was, was that a conversation you had with your camp or did you approach them and say, we no. gotta get rid of some stuff? I think they, they saw, you know, the schedule that I was on and some of the other fighters in our gym, you know, I had five fights in 16 months as a champion. And again, it's not just the fight itself, it's the work we have to do to get ready for the fight. So they saw um, the, the detriment that was doing to me and some of the other fighters. So it was good to re refresh everything. And obviously, I, I feel like you're a big energy guy. Like you kind of feel energy from people. Have yes. you run into him at all in the hotel? And what do you, what energy are you getting from him? Uh, not really him, but I saw his coach and his brother, and they're cool. You said uh, I, I don't care about belts. I'm coming for heads. And I think someone you said you wanted to show off yourself in this octagon. So I guess. How do you view success fighting Drikas? Is it beating him? Is it beating him spectacularly? Is it just putting on like a fight that fans are enjoying? How, how do you view success against him? Mm. Success against him will be all three. Did you see the footage of his coach using a taser in fight camp when people were out of uh, position and grappling and stuff? He would like tase their feet and stuff. Yeah, Eugene uses knives. He always has a knife on him. Is he here? No, he's not. If he does, he'll have a knife on him. So I've had knives pointed at me before. It's not this camp, though. I was, I was good. I was good this camp. Uh, they announced Francis is making his return to MMA. So I am guess uh, a lot of people view him as like kind of the face of African MMA, just, mm -hmm. you know, from the UFC to the PFL. So of I guess what's, what's the response from his return that maybe you felt in, you know, in Africa? Um, I'm happy for him. I'm happy for what he's doing. He just went through something that I would never wish on anyone. And, you know, we've talked, uh, I've checked up on him. And again, uh, I respect Francis so much. He's an inaugural part of what we've done in the UFC. You know, right now I know there's competition between other promotions and the UFC and battles. But again, you can never erase history because the streets, the internet will always remember no matter what. And I think they'll fix this eventually, but it's just, a lot of chest puffing, but um, yeah, I think hopefully they'll. The UFC are smart people. They'll, they'll understand and they'll 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 rectify this eventually. Just you can't erase Francis's legacy in the UFC. It's part of what we've done, you know. It's forever in history in stone. So trying to whitewash it or just not talk about it is silly. And I know he's fighting for, you know, the PFL right now, but it's still still history you can't you can't just turn a blind eye to it so um again i'm sure they'll they'll fix it eventually this is how business goes with the ufc and yeah it's very you know we talk about legacy a lot in this sport and it's the reason why a lot of people do it you know when you see what's happening with francis and stuff is it a concern that the turnover of fans in this sport is so high paced that legacies like his can be forgotten if the promotion itself doesn't celebrate them as often as they can mm, it can be but also again we're in the age of the internet so I don't think it's going to be forgotten as, as easily as as they try. But um, yeah, also myself, look, my last fight was atrocious for myself. I was not happy with that fight. And, you know, the fans, the media, they, you're only as good as your last fight. They keep all these fucking, sometimes these sayings that don't make sense anymore. Um, you're only as good as your last fight. I don't get it, but at the same time, I'm like, okay. But um, yeah, so. For me, even this weekend, I kind of want to do what I have to do, and when I do it, and then people are gonna be like, "Fuck! How did we? How did we not see this coming? How did we underestimate that he was gonna do this? Amazing!" So yeah, it's just time to remind people. You mentioned before that the the vibe is calm this week. What? Well, why is that calm? I think also because a lot of people expected like, "Man, it's gonna be a crazy fiery build up." Where's that calmness coming from? Mm, experience. A lot. Of, a lot has happened in the last eleven months. I've. I've had to go through some life shit myself. My life really, social, my, my 
personal life is easy on like social media or shit like that all the time so for me i have to go through a lot of life stuff and a lot of uh, soul searching and a lot of um you know what do i want from this game what do i want from life what do i see myself all that kind of question what, what do i want my legacy to be all these questions i have to ask myself and have an honest talk to myself and yeah eventually i just knew when i came back i wanted to be like renew, reinvented. I wanted to be a different, what did, it, what did Kobe say? Same animal, but a different beast. Yeah. Israel. Oh, sorry, not done yet. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Almost done. I was gonna say, um, that face off that you and Drikas had, it went for ages, but it was such a calm presser and then the energy changed. What was it that made the energy change so abruptly? So for me, I just didn't, ex I don't know what to expect, but he, he tried to puffer fish me and then he realized pretty quickly I'm not the one you can try and just blow smoke at. And yeah, he felt my energy and he's he understands. He knows who he's dealing with now. That moment right there, let him know. He got to look into my eyes and see who I am. Yeah, I don't know what brought it on, but it's just deja vu. I've been here before. I've, I've battled with the best. Like no one can intimidate me. No one can intimidate me. and. He definitely won't do that. Um, something that you've been saying a lot is like, you, you want to show him who he is. Take us into that. What, what exactly does that mean? Who is he? You'll find out. All right. Um, this guy, he's been waiting. Israel, um, what are you expecting from Drikas on, on fight night? And what do you make of being, you know, the odds on favorite for this one? And Drikas, the champ, is the underdog. I don't know. I didn't really know I was the favorite. Um, what do I expect from Drikas? I just expect him to bring his best. He says he feels amazing. So I'm like, good. That's what I want. And just last thing, that 11 months is the longest break you've had since you started combat sports in 2010, which is just insane to think about. Um, to, to get, that's like a normal break for most UFC champions we see. So for you, like, how much have you kind of evolved during that time and how much do you think the freshness might affect your performance? I think you guys will see the best me you've seen yet. Um, I'm the biggest I've ever been, the most um, muscular I guess I've ever been. I feel faster. I surprise myself sometimes with the speed that I'm hitting with. Um, I'm not really hitting hard, I'm just really sharp. And I feel like a blade in this one. So yeah, it's been good to refresh myself and reset myself and now let's get it. And last question, Dana White recently shared that Sean Strickland is going to be getting the winner of you and Drickus after this weekend. How do you feel about that and do you think he should be in line as opposed to the winner of Rob Whitaker? You're, you're not listening, are you? You know, it's we've already answered that. We talked about that earlier on. All right, that'll be the last one. But yeah, thank you. This was fun, and um, yeah, till next one.